All right, guys, so I just finished up some amazing side mount diving, and it's one of my favorite places to go here locally. It's called Gray Quarry. It's in Johnson City, Tennessee. It's very local to us. It's within, say, less than a three-hour ride for us, and it's a beautiful place. It's only 65 foot deep, and it's aerated. That means it's the same temperature top to bottom. There's absolutely zero thermoclines, and it's pretty well crystal clear year-round, and it's great for all different types of diving. Recreational diving, a little bit of deco diving. It's great for side mount guys, rec guys. You name it, you can pretty much do it there. However, there is a major downfall to Gray Quarry, and that downfall is it's infested with zebra mussels. And as divers, we should always be cautious of not contaminating waters by picking up living organisms from one body of the water and transferring them to the next. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the proper way to clean your gear to help eliminate any type of spread of zebra mussels from one area to the next. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, if you're a diver that gets to travel a lot, you will probably understand that you're going to dive in all different types of environments. Fresh water, salt water, and you're going to come across a slew of different types of species. And some of these species can be very evasive. If you dive in salt water, of course you got linefish. We all understand how evasive they are. But what about freshwater? Are there any type of invasive species that we should concern ourselves with? Well, one of those species, of course, are zebra mussels. This is what a zebra mussel looks like right here. And they're actually very sharp, and they're called zebra mussels based off their design. They got their zebra stripes on them. And they survive, of course, in fresh, say, cool water. We find them a lot up north, and we find them up in the mountainous regions. And one of the places we go dive a lot is Gray Quarry in Johnson, Tennessee. And it's an absolutely beautiful place to go dive. I would highly encourage you to go check it out. However, please make sure you're cleaning your gear properly after diving there so that we're not spreading zebra mussels all around. We've got one of our local quarries currently shut down because it is infested with zebra mussels right now. We're trying to figure out how to eradicate them so that we're not spreading them to other bodies of water. Well, as I stated in the teaser, I'm going to show you today how I clean my gear to make sure I'm eradicating the spread of the evasive zebra mussels. So come on over and I'm going to show you exactly how I clean my gear. All right, guys, so if you've watched any of my gear cleaning videos before, you'll know I love using my Pelican box as a cleaning container, if you will. Uh, this particular box here is a 1615 from the Air Series, and it holds roughly 15 gallons of water. And it's very important that whatever you wash your gear in, you understand the capacity that it can hold. So typically speaking, if you are dealing with a contaminant or an invasive species like zebra mussels, you're going to make your own mixture of cleaning uh, solution. Either it's going to be a salt-based or a dishwashing-based liquid. If you're going to be diving in salt water, you want to use about 5% dishwashing liquid to your solution. That's roughly one cup per gallon. If you're going to be diving, say, in fresh water and you want to make sure you get it good and clean, you're going to mix up, say, a 3.5% salt solution or a half a cup per gallon. So I've basically got a 15-gallon tub here. I've got seven and a half um, cups of cleaning solution here. But before we get started, the first thing I want to do is inspect my gear. Now, I've already got some other cleaning solutions in here. But let's say I just finished my dive. I want to truly inspect my gear. I want to go through and I want to look for any debris, contaminants, things like that. Because zebra mussels can just stick to your gear. And if I don't see any, I want to take a brush and just brush off my gear. Try to get any type of larva or anything like that that I can off. And of course, you want to be careful doing this around a body of water. You'll notice I'm here on my farm. I'm nowhere near a body of water. I'm not at my local lake or my local diving environment. I want to get it completely away from, say, an uncontaminated water source and I just want to brush it off once that's done then of course I'm going to soak it in the solution now as I stated before I've got about 15 gallons of water here I've got about seven and a half gallons or I'm sorry seven and a half cups of that cleaning solution that we talked about making up and I'm just going to pour it in here now one thing that I would state that you could do is use heated water don't use cold water you know if you have to boil you up some water and do it that way or use hot water then you're just going to simply let your equipment soak a good long time. You want to get that down in there so if there are any larvae or any live living organisms, it can kill them and hopefully eradicate it. But once that's done, of course, I'm going to rebrush it. And I'm just going to get in here and scrub my gear really good just to make sure that it's all nice and clean and that nothing could actually survive of that. I'm actually going to let it soak for a little bit longer. Once that's done, I'm going to pull it out. 
I'm gonna take it over here and I'm gonna rinse it off really good. Now this is a very important step here. You wanna make sure that you're not rinsing it off that where the runoff can go into another body of water. I'm just here in my driveway, I'm gonna rinse it off really, really good. And then I'm gonna hang it up and let it dry. Now it's actually recommended that you let your equipment dry for a solid five days before you transport it to say another body a body of water. Maybe I'm going from a quarry that's got a bunch of zebra mussels and I'm going to a local lake the next morning. I would actually either wanna change out my gear and use something that wasn't contaminated or I can actually thoroughly dry the gear. Now, this time of the year, I can dry it very easily. Just hang it up and let it dry, and it's going to be good to go. However, if you're going, say, from day to day, and you don't have time to dry your gear, you can use some type of cloth that's going to soak up that fluid or that liquid that's on it. I personally like the chamois cloths or, say, a microfiber towel. It's really good. You can roll your gear up. It's going to pull that moisture out. Uh, you can put a fan on it overnight to help dry it up as well. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're going to be diving contaminated water, Waters, and then you're going to be transferring to another body of water within say that five day period please make sure you're drying your gear out very well if you do have time to wait by all means please wait that five days all right guys to close out this video let's talk about a quick topic really quick let's say you do find yourself in a body of water that has some type of invasive species such as say the zebra mussels and you did the the correct cleaning procedures, you cleaned all your gear and you're hanging it up, you're letting it dry, but unfortunately you do have to go out and make it another dive first thing the next morning. It may actually be better for you to purchase multiple sets of gear. Yes, I said it, I know it's gonna be costly, and yes, I'm very fortunate that I have multiple BCs. I can literally swap back and forth, but we have responsibility of divers to protect our local environments and actually we should be protecting all waterways no matter where it is so if you have the ability to have multiple vcs if you know you're going to be diving in an environment that has some type of invasive species by all means switch out the bc or simply wait that five days to clean it if you have to and if you are in a situation say where i am as an instructor where i have to jump between multiple bodies of water please make sure that you're cleaning your gear properly so that we can prevent the spread of any type of evasive species but guys that's going to do it for today's video if you got any questions on zebra mussels or any other type of evasive species drop me a comment down below and i'll try to answer your questions the best i can as quick as i can as well but guys if you like this video give me a big thumbs up definitely share it and let me know down in the comment section below do you have some type of evasive species that you have to deal with and how do you clean your gear the proper way guys that's going to do it for today take care god bless and i'll see you in the next video